What's up, chickies? Today we're going to be talking about what will like science look like in Star Citizen. Now, this script I didn't write. This was done by Kodiak. He wanted to do it for a video of his own, but he didn't put it out there. He didn't want it to get lost or anything within the YouTube sort of search and whatnot. But I reckon people would respond really well to this, so we're going to get into it. So the topic is what will science look like in Star Citizen? First, we'll need to determine what sciences Star Citizen will be using, as there is very little that has been released about it. Let's see what we can extrapolate from the ships we know about. In very broad terms, the ships in Star Citizen can be broken down into few types. Obviously, there are combat ships, transport ships, mining ships, you get the picture. But there are a few that have either multiple roles or specialty roles. So these are the ships we'll be looking at now. For materials, you want something like the Orion, the Expanse, and the Starfarer, as they refine one thing into another. A usable, or at least more profitable version, while technically part of the mining gameplay loop, refining would fall under materials science. Purifying something collected from the game, we would expect something similar with other harvestables around the verse, like what we would find in the next category. So this is exploration, the Carrick, the Odyssey, the 315P, the Mustang Beta, the Connie Aquila, the 600i, the Corsair, the 400i, and the Terrapin, along with the Freelancer Dur and all of those exploration ships. They are meant to go out and find new things, the rough, the tumble, or at least more adventurous approach to science, but great for collecting samples and data for use in our final category of ships. So the next one you have is research, so the Endeavour and the Reliance Sen. So far, the only two true science ships we know about, and we know very little about them but let's see what we can figure out the reliance sen should be able to scan and identify various signals through its enhanced sensor suite perhaps giving a detailed view of an area instead of a broad overview or if CIG decides to do so, make a jump point mapping module equipable to the size 4 mounts on the scent, allowing it to map jump points like the Carrick, only with much less range. The Endeavour, the big boy of science. With its detachable forward section, the Endeavour is the only ship you'll need to fully explore an area, along with its selection of modules. It's your one-stop shop for science gameplay. The modules may even point to what CIG is thinking about when it comes to future science gameplay. We of course have the biodomes of the Olympic class, capable of growing food or medical plants. The medical facility and landing bays of the Hope class, you can complete hospital ship so that one will be really great to have that i'll see this one being very popular we also have the general science and research pods of the discovery class the mobile laboratory so that one will be interesting as well and seeing what people will come up with these two are particularly interesting let's take a closer look at them first the science pod from cig these are designed for analytical data gathering and a house of a variety of scientific computers and data banks mainly used for turning the raw information gathered gathered by the general research pods or the telescopic array, it can also be used for getting data from elsewhere in the verse. This is interesting as the science pod seems more like storage and sorting or sifting through data collected by other means, data on plants, biomes, planets, stars and nebulae for selling off or combining with other things to make a profit. The research pod. From what CIG, this is intended as a multi-use facility that can support a variety of active scientific pursuits like biological studies, microscopy, zero gravity experiments. It houses internal slots for precision scanners, sample and specimen collections, spectrometers and chemical analyzers. It is capable of cataloging new experimental data as well as producing cutting edge compounds. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. So from what this description, we can find a few other things. So you precision scanners, sample and specimen collections. These will likely be the various tasks we or our crew will be able to work on. Scanning the nearby perfect Hadesian artifact, hoping to find anything more about the lost civilization, collecting the soil, air, water and plant matter from the newly discovered world. Perhaps bringing back some of the local fauna, xenomorph hissing gift boreal stalker in a cage for study um, though the strange readings we are detecting from a quantanium asteroid that crashed down here revealing a large deposit that can be mined with a ground base spectrometers and chemical analyzers could be a second loop 
of gameplay that comes after the scanning and collection of samples. These I could see being used both in the field and in the labs. Hand or probe scanning would allow you finding interesting things to take back for further study. I would imagine some options like the current refining process, balancing yield or detail and time. Ah, the soil of this area would be excellent for planetary settlement and farming. You will then be able to sell the location to another player or an org for profit. So a lot of people don't know this about some of these modules with the data. You can sell it onwards as well or keep it. The final two modules on the Endeavour, more interesting ones like the telescopic array, like the recent James Webb telescope, will be able to view distant locations and when coupled with the research pod, probably providing a detailed reading of the planet without having to travel there. Or you'll be able to track down a new jump point entrance, perhaps one that is unstable but would allow for rapid transit to another system far from prying eyes of the UEE. This would be of particular advantage to the local smuggler groups who would pay well for its location as well as probably being able to avoid pirates and any sort of group that would interdict you and try and pirate you or take your stuff or even try and kill you so that's just, just another factor is like finding jump points that a lot of people don't know about and being able to keep that information or sell it onwards depending if you want to keep that sort of secret to yourself and just other groups that have discovered it so that's just one thing and something that i've been thinking of and lastly the big ring the overclocking master the super collider cig says this is an elaborate overclocking facility it includes a pair of white room workbench labs i Ideal for tweaking and overclocking ship components like weapons or thrusters, pushing them to their theoretical limits. This clearly has some advantages, tweaking, tuning, overclocking, modding. All of this will be a way to make our ships more personal, a boost to the thrusters here, and an upgraded capacitor somewhere there. So there's just so many different things you can do with this module, and that's something I'm taking an interest in, and a lot of the guys I'm playing with that are taking interest in. So tweaking a power plant to produce more power, so it produces 50% more power, allowing the power equivalent of 50% going to each system or enhanced capacitors, allowing for more shots for your energy weapons, overclock Locking the thrusters for your daily driver, making it more agile or having a higher SEM speed. Just a little something extra to give you that little bit of an edge. So what I would like to see with this game loop is modding components of various items. Replace the stock capacitor with one that holds twice the charge. Replace the laser emitters with one made from a synthetic compound you discovered on Pyro, making shots deal 20% more damage but generates much more heat per shot. Shields that absorb 5-15% to of the incoming energy damage, which is turn recharges the shields but would lower the overall shield strength. This is, of course, all depends on how CIG decides to do with these options and what they want to do with them. I'm sure they won't be massively overpowered, just something of a give and take for various stats. How much of this will be part of the game? We don't know, as this is a simple speculation, but it certainly shines a light on one of the lesser known game loops CIG is planning. So this was a really interesting topic. Thank you for that, um, Kodiak. I would really like to actually go a little bit deeper into this. And a lot of people do know my sort of take on the Super Collider on the um, Endeavor as well. So my whole thing is doing exactly like overclocking components, putting them like on the uh, Banu Merchantman so I can sell them. People didn't know that you can actually repair salvage components with the crucible so that is another part to add into that game loop so you can pretty much go out and have a dog fight with a ship go salvage the components off it put it on the crucible repair them go and put them on the super collider of the endeavor and then do what you need to with them and then sell them on the banu merchant or even just keep them for yourself for stock and then then you know actually having to use them when you want but having to be able to change sort of like the stock capacitors so that you can hold twice the charge and 
any like sort of a laser emitter that you can change out with the synthetic compound just changing different little pieces a component so that would be really cool i see this gameplay going really far and having like unlimited possibilities probably like not really having any fixed algorithm and anything being able to be changed into something they may limit it at some point so that we can't make a whole heap of crazy stuff but this is definitely going to be a cool game loop and i see this being very very beneficial in the future of Star Citizen. So I hope you enjoyed this. Thank you, Kodiak, for that. That was really awesome. And we'll see you in the verse.